Your voice is your own. Part 1. I hated presentations with every inch of my soul. Whenever I had to do one, I would say something stupid and get a bad grade. Even after years of speech therapy, I could not say what I wanted to say when I wanted to. I would go blank as soon as I tried to speak. So I did not participate in things like debates or talent shows at school. Even the thought of them was mortifying. The reason I liked sports was that there was not much talking involved. I felt good when I did something without messing it up. When I started high school, it had been difficult for me to adjust to many more kids and labels like popular and unpopular. I had gone to small and middle school where everyone got along, but it was different there. As soon as I got accepted into the school football team, I was labeled as a jock, but not a very popular one. I was in the middle, where I got invited to stuff, had friends, and no one troubled me. And I was content with that. When I was in my junior year, my English teacher told us that since our marks in the previous semester had been bad, we all had to do an extra project to boost our marks. Darius, the smartest kid in our class, complained, of course. I do not see how those of us who are hardworking have to do extra credit with those who cannot get the work done. How come when I wanted extra credit assignment last year to boost my 98, you refused, he said. Darius, I understand, but your marks were good enough back then. I need everyone to do this project because it's an official assignment, our teacher said. And you will be pairing up. You will also have to do a presentation. It is due in a month, she said, as she started to hand out the assignment. I sank into my teeth in despair. I hated presentations. I was the worst speaker possibly in the whole school. I thought of asking the teacher if she could have me do something else instead, but I was too shy. Darius and Daniel, she said as she called out the pairs. I should have rejoiced when she said that, but honestly, I was scared. Darius was the smartest guy in the whole school, was involved in nearly every extracurricular activity, and was always dead serious about work. He was so confident that he had earned the nickname Ice King. He was obnoxious, proud, and insufferable. I did not want to be in a team with him because we were polar opposites. Rumor had it that he ruled a chess team with an iron fist and did not tolerate any form of incompetence. He usually worked alone if he could help it, but in the team, he was unbearable. I had gone many years without crossing his path, but now my luck had run out. My friend Gary looked at me with an expression of pity on her face. As soon as class was dismissed, a hand slammed on my desk. I looked up in an alarm and it was Darius, staring at me critically. In those two seconds, I felt so naked. He was so intimidating that I started to shake. Hi Daniel, as you know, I am Darius. I do not think we have each other's phone numbers. Here is my card, 7pm at my place. I have a debate at 6, he, he said, handing a tiny piece of paper to me and walking away. I put the piece of paper in my pocket and left the classroom. I was happier when I realized that it was the last lesson of the day and I had football practice. We had a game in a few days and we had been practicing like mad, but I did not mind it at all. I liked the feeling of my muscles stretching and the exhaustion that came with pushing my limits. Everything was going well and the coach was discussing our strategies with us, but I kept on seeing that there was a flaw in his plans. I considered saying something but the words could not come to me and I spent the rest of the practice beating myself up. I kept on telling myself that I would say something soon enough, but the time never came, so I decided just to talk to him on the following day. Hey, wanna go to Sally's diner later on? Eve will be there. Gary said after practice. He was one of my closest friends and an extrovert, unlike me. Eve was that girl that I had been trying to ask out for a long time, but I chickened out every time. She was a nice enough person and we got along. I thought we would make a good couple, at least it would mean that I would stop being the single one in the group. I got teased a lot about it, but I knew that my friends were just joking and did not mean anything by it. Either way, I was sure that once we were dating, Eve and I would get closer and we would fall in love. I would never let any of my friends know, but I was very romantic at heart. My aunt used to read classic love stories to me, books like Pride and Prejudice, Our Mutual Friend, and Withering Heights. Granted, I did not want my love story to end tragically, but I did want to love someone so much that I could not eat or sleep. It was my little secret that I could not let anyone else know. I hoped that Eve and I would have something like that when I finally got the courage to ask her to be my girlfriend. We had gone out together several times, Sometimes alone and other times with friends, but the dates always ended with an awkward hug and nothing more. Sure, but I have to leave before 7pm. I have to work on the English project, I said. Wait, you're starting already? There's no surprise since you were paired with Darius. Good luck, my man, he said. When we got to the diner, there was a table full of some friends and popular acquaintances. 
and everyone seemed to be having a blast. I faded into the background and I just watched people interacting with others. It was so much easier than trying to think of something funny to say or freezing when someone asked me a question. They found it cute that I did not say much, especially the talkative ones. I usually got stuck with a person who would be talking non-stop and all I had to do was nod to confirm that I understood. It worked out fine for me. Suddenly someone tapped me from behind. Hey Dan, Eve smiled. I instantly got nervous and my palms started sweating. I told myself to calm down and I managed to after a few moments. I bought her a milkshake and listened to her speak about what happened during art class on that day. She flirted a bit but I was so bad at flirting that the only thing I managed to do was try to wink, of which she stared at me strangely. Eve, I have to ask you something, I blurted out. Of course, Dan, she smiled at me expectantly. I noticed that some of her friends turned to look at us. Will you... I did not get a chance to finish because my phone rang. It was Darius. I had texted him after practice to let him know that I would be at his place before 7. Sorry, I have to take this, I whispered to Eve and I walked off. Which planet are you living on? I said 7 for goodness sake. I have a packed schedule, okay? You cannot just rock up when you want to, Darius said in a very calm but clearly upset tone. I'm sorry, dude. I lost track of time, I said. Be here soon, he said, and he hung up the phone. I checked the time and it was 7.10. I waved goodbye to Gary and slipped out of the diner. His house was not very far and I was there in a couple of minutes. A young girl who looked just like him answered the door and made me follow her. He was sitting at a desk and typing frantically on his laptop. You can start by reading through that stack of books there. I have a lot of books on the Renaissance period, luckily, so we should be sorted on the project, he said, without looking up. I was just glad that he was so focused on whatever he was doing and did not start shouting at me. We worked in silence for a while, with me feeding him the information from several books while he typed. I had no idea what he was typing, though but I did not ask because I did not want to get scolded. But the thing about me is that I cannot sit for a long time while doing something. I started getting restless. It was nearly 9 p.m. and he did not seem to be stopping. Hey, we could just take a break and continue tomorrow morning, I said quietly, but he just kept on typing. He was too in the zone to hear me. Darius, I want to go home now, I said a bit louder. He gasped and stopped typing. I'm so sorry, I got so caught up. I have a few ideas for what we could talk about with full outlines and everything, he said. How many, I asked. Oh, about five, he said nonchalantly. I went over to check the document he was working on and sure enough, there were pages of notes and rough ideas, but nothing concrete. Wow, you're good. I barely did anything, I said sheepishly. No, you helped. We already have a few references and now we will not have to go far to look for info. Anyway, sorry for keeping you late. If you're not busy tomorrow, then we can meet to discuss the presentation aspect, he said. We have a whole month, though, I said. I know that you're a week at public speaking. If I had been paired with someone who experienced less anxiety, I would only have to meet them a few times, and then we would have been good. I'm going to have to help you become good at public speaking, he said. Wait, that was not the... I started. Let me drive you home, he said. During the car ride, we barely said anything to each other, which was just fine with me because I was exhausted. I had been planning to enjoy the rest of my night by hanging out with my aunt, but the plans were ruined. Speaking of, I had not told her that I was going to be home late on that day. Hopefully she would not be too mad at me. When I got home, I found her asleep on the TV. Auntie Gemma, get up, please. I just got home, I shook her. She slowly began to wake up and smiled up at me. Did he come home yet? I asked. A while ago, he's in the study and said that he wanted to talk to you, she said. I gritted my teeth when she told me that my father was home, and the fact that he wanted to speak to me made me dread seeing him more. Go and get some sleep. I will go and see him, I said as I walked to his study. I knocked and entered, finding him pouring some alcohol into a glass. My son, I have been waiting for you. Come in, take a seat, have a drink, he beamed. You know I don't drink, I said. Not even with your old man, he asked. What do you want, I asked. I do not know why, but I was on a bit of an edge that night. My words came out sharper and bolder than they did when I usually spoke to him. How's school going? He asked. Fine. How far are you from becoming team captain? You need me to talk to your coach? He asked. No, Dad, please, don't do that. I want to get the position through merit. Plus, I'm still a junior, so I have plenty of time, I said. What is it with you? It's like you have an aversion to succeeding. You refuse to go to private schools or even run for school president. No son of mine will be a failure, he hissed. I wanted to tell him that he was wrong. 
Elton had been all that he wanted, but where did that lead him? But I could never question my father or let him know that I did not want this life he was forcing on me. Every day he was on my case about making the family proud and how it was disappointing him. It was almost like I was a broken toy that he was trying to fix. When I stammered as a young child, he made me go to countless speech therapy sessions until I was normal. He got me stuff that I did not even want to use, forced me to attend business events with him, and reminded me every day that I had to take over from him one day, but I did not want any of that. I was just trying to be a teenager. I'm going to sleep, I said as I turned around. Your mother's traits are so strong within you. Why do you choose to be a weakling, he said. No, he could not speak about my mother as if she was nothing, not after all that she suffered because of him. One day I was going to tell him exactly what I thought of him, but that day was surely somewhere in the future. Because I could not say anything. I was a coward. The next day I met up with Darius, much earlier since both of our schedules were free. We talked a bit and came to the conclusion of what idea to use, when he started to have me present the topic. I stood there for a while and started speaking, but all that came out was a bunch of sounds and nothing coherent. This is worse than the last time you gave a speech, he sighed. You remembered that time? I asked. Yes, your PowerPoint was creative with some good points, but you started stammering, he said. I'm surprised you noticed or even remembered, I said. I remember everything, he said a bit sadly. I was about to ask him what was going on when he cleared his throat and carried on. What is your name and what are you going to speak about today, he asked me. My name is Daniel Knight, and I'm going to speak about the different types of artists in the Renaissance period, I said. Very good, but your tone's a bit deadpan. Please try and speak to me as if you were speaking to a friend, he said. I had to admit, he was really good at what he did. I had not expected him to be a bit of a dictator, but he was very patient with me. I think we have covered a lot today. Take the flash drive over there. It has videos that can help you overcome stage fright, he said. Thank you, I smiled as I went to the desk where his laptop was. But as I was removing it, the laptop made a sound. There on the corner of the screen was a notification from Grinder. I was taken aback because I did not expect him to be gay, or even interested in love. He never dated at school. He even wore black on Valentine's Day. I could not help being nosy and I read the message, which was actually kind of sweet. He was suddenly beside me and removing the notification. We stared at each other for a few seconds. Do not look so surprised. It's just a dating app, he acted unbothered. I'm sorry for prying. I did not think you were gay. Sorry for making assumptions. No, I am sorry for not making assumptions or... I did not even know what I was saying at that point. It's okay. Are you going to ask for another partner? He asked. Why? I asked. I do not know. Not everyone could be okay with it. He shrugged. Actually, I don't care what your sexuality is. It changes nothing between us, I said. Thank you. He smiled. Have you come out yet? I asked. Only to my close friends and family. I do not know if I'm ready for everyone at school to find out yet, he said. I never pictured you as being someone who could be nervous, I said. I'm not a nice king, despite what you've been led to believe, but life is so much easier when I do not show that I have feelings. You have no idea what it's like being me. For the first time, I saw that he looked a bit sad. I was sure that there was a story to why he had chosen to be so cold. I had a sudden desire to know who he was when he was not putting up the facade of being icy. I wondered what had made him so cold. To be continued. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.